The 2023 NFL Draft is one year into their careers, and in today's video, we will be going back and grading the back half of the first round, which is picks 17 through 31. For anyone who may not remember the reason there were 31 picks in the first round of the 2023 Draft, the Dolphins forfeited their first round selection as a punishment for violations of the league's anti-tampering policy while trying to recruit both Tom Brady and Sean Payton. For anyone interested, grading picks 1 through 16 will be linked at the end of this video. We will be going in reverse order and starting with the Chiefs selection of pass rusher Felix and Adike Uzama and finishing with Patriots corner Christian Gonzalez. We all know why we're here, so let's dive right in. Felix and Adike Uzama was the Chiefs' first round selection, and what needs to be remembered with this pick and a few others we will discuss is it was a developmental pick. Felix's expectations entering year one were low because of George Karloftis, Charles Aminihu, even if he was suspended early in the year, and Mike Dana above him on the depth chart. The plan was for Felix to occasionally work in in year one and to be a starter in year two and beyond. Felix played more than 30 snaps in a game just once, which was against the Chargers in week 8 18, but even when he was out there more consistently in weeks 1 through 5, he was not making noise, which is a bit concerning. He also had a pass rush win rate of just 3.4%, which is abysmal, and the limited time he played, he wasn't good. His best game was against Jacksonville, in which he had half a sack and a forced fumble. For the people that say first round picks are expected to contribute immediately, then go ahead and give this pick an F, because again, Felix wasn't good when he played, but this this was always going to be a project pick. He had no starts in his rookie year, and I expect him to be a much bigger contributor in 2024. Nolan Smith was the Eagles' second first-round pick of the night, as the other was used on Jalen Carter at number 9 overall, and in Nolan's rookie year, he would go on to have 18 total tackles, 3 quarterback hits, a tackle for a loss, and a sack. It's easy to look at the Eagles' defense in 2023 and be disappointed with Nolan's production and basically think out loud, why couldn't he get more in-game reps and get more opportunities? I really thought Nolan could have been a great rotational rusher in his rookie year, and I thought with how the Eagles looked in 2022, with Reddick having 16 sacks and Josh Sweat having 11, that Nolan could be a good change-up in a pass rush situation and get 5 or 6 sacks as a rookie. But the Eagles know what they're doing in development and the long-term play they have with not only pass rushers, but offensive linemen too. I wanted the Eagles to take a DB like a Joey Porter Jr. or Brian Branch in this spot, but over time I think Nolan will be just fine. Based on his rookie year, if you want to give a developmental player who had 8 pressures on just 91 pass rushing snaps, which equates to less than 7 per game a bad grade, by all means go for it, but he had one game with double digit pass rushing snaps. I personally would give this an incomplete grade. Brian Brzee, the defensive tackle from Clemson, went to the Saints, and in his rookie year, he had 24 total tackles, 9 quarterback hits, 7 tackles for a loss, and 4.5 and sacks. While 24 total tackles may not look the most impressive, what I want to emphasize is how good Brzee looked at times, at such a young age from a position that is very difficult to transition to. Brzee was also double-teamed quite a bit, which shows the respect opposing offensive linemen and opposing play callers already have for him. He finished 4 fourth amongst rookie interior defensive linemen and pressures with 31, behind Jalen Carter of the Eagles, Kobe Turner of the Rams, and Kalijah Kansi of the Bucks. I don't know if Brzee will ever be a huge stat sheet guy, but one year later I like this pick, and I think the Saints drafted a guy who could start for them for the next 6 or 7 years. I know people want to focus on the grand slams in the draft, but I think this is a solid double and this gets a B. Miles Murphy, the pass rusher from Clemson, is up, and like we've seen with Nolan Smith and FAU, this pick is tricky to grade because there needs to be context. The Bengals' season didn't go according to plan, and this pick was used to be a third pass rusher behind Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard, and to have these three guys get after Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. Not only that, but Miles just turned 22, and the reality of the draft is late first round picks are a lot of the time developmental picks, and in the Bengals' case, this was used to be a year two and beyond guy, kind of like their 2022 first round pick Dax Hill, who had 16 tackles in his rookie year and over 100 in his second year. For the crowd that wants a grade based on first year production, sure you can give this a C- or D+, and say he only had 20 tackles and 3 sacks, but I would personally grade this incomplete B 
because of the intention with the pick. Pick 6 in the first round and pick 29 are different stratospheres of expectations, despite both being first round selections. Miles flashed at times during his rookie year, but one year later I would grade this incomplete. The Jags selected tackle Anton Harrison after trading back with the Bills, and I thought Anton played better as the season went on. The Jags didn't have the best season by any means, as they were 8-3 at a point and eventually missed the playoffs, but Harrison fared well as a rookie, at least in the past pro game, because there is a lot of room for improvement for him as a run blocker. Despite there being room for improvement with that, that's something that can be worked on, and he showed flashes as a pass protector. No disrespect to Travis Etienne, but the number one priority in Jacksonville is to protect Trevor Lawrence. First and foremost, protect the franchise quarterback, which Harrison did a good job of in 2023. He did all of this as a 21-year-old rookie, and with guys coming out of college in the 2022 to 2023 area, it seemed guys were either 21 or 24 going on 25 as a rookie due to COVID years, which is a big difference in how their rookie season should be interpreted. Harrison played solid overall, and one year later, this is a B. Mozzie Smith, the big fella from Michigan, is up, and Mozzie finished his rookie year with 13 total tackles, 3 quarterback hits, 3 tackles for a loss, and a sack. Admittedly, I had higher expectations for the big fella entering his rookie year, and I thought he could have had 35 or 40 tackles, and 7 or 8 tackles for a loss along with 4 or 5 sacks. But Mozzie only played 28% of the defensive snaps the Cowboys had in 2023, and he played all 17 games. After reading some comments from grading the picks 1 through 16 video, aside from injury of course, when a guy only plays 3 or 4 games in his rookie year, there seems to be frustration with incomplete grades. Having said that, we will grade this pick, and I think it's a failure in the chain of command because Mozzie should have played more than he did in his rookie year. He's physically imposing, and it's not like Mozzie couldn't have played to get more experience. This is a very frustrating pick one year later because it seems like a wasted year. He's strong as hell, and it would have been nice to see him push the pocket in the games Dallas was destroying teams, but he never played 50% of the snaps in one game, and I would put this pick on upper management more than I would Mozzie being a bad football player. One year later, this is an F grade. Dalton Kincaid was the first tight end off the board, in his rookie year he would have 73 receptions for over 650 yards and 2 touchdowns. Tight ends usually take a year or two to get accustomed to the physicality of the NFL as these guys have to block defensive ends in the run game, then go beat DBs one on one in the receiving game, and needless to say, there's not a lot of guys that are great at both. I think you can make the case that Kincaid only pulling in two touchdowns as a rookie is disappointing, but what also needs to be remembered is Josh Allen ran for 15 touchdowns, so that's naturally going to take away touchdowns from a player, whether that's Kincaid or Stefan Diggs. I really like the future of Kincaid in this offense, and the Bills are going to have some tough decisions to make at the receiver position this offseason, and I think Dalton is in a great position to have 1,000 yards as a tight end next year. I also don't think Josh will run for 15 again, and I think Dalton can be a double-digit touchdown player. He will soon be Josh's favorite target, and for now, this is a B+. Deontay Banks, the corner from Maryland, is up, and Deontay went through some growing pains as a rookie, which is to be expected, but I thought he had a good rookie year overall. Rookie corners getting beat by guys like Devontae Adams or C.D. Lamb is to be expected, as going up against guys from Purdue or Indiana in the Big Ten is way different than playing Adams and Lamb in back-to-back -back weeks. What else needs to be remembered pertaining to Deontay is a lot of the time, he was one-on-one -on -one with the household name receivers as a 22-year-old rookie. So yes, there were plays he gave up, but he was pretty solid for the most part. Sure, he had some penalties called on him, but he was put in a bad situation for most rookie corners. This was a true sink-or-swim scenario for Deontay in his rookie year, and more often than not, he swam. It wasn't a generational rookie year by any means, but I like what the Giants have in him moving forward, and I I think Banks will start for them for the next four or five years. A B plus grade. Jordan Addison was the Vikings' first round pick and entered a favorable situation as he would get to work behind Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson and have a Pro Bowl quarterback throwing the ball in Kirk Cousins. 
For a rookie receiver, this situation was about as close to perfect as you're ever going to have. The only situation that would be comparable would have been if the Chiefs drafted a receiver in the first round to play behind Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. Defenses will never make Jordan Addison the primary focus of the game plan because they can't, and with all of this being said, Jordan would go on to lead the first round receivers in receiving yards and receiving touchdowns as he finished the year with 10. His 10 touchdowns tied Lions tight end Sam Laporta for the lead amongst all rookies, and he finished tied for fourth in the NFL. With Addison's rookie year, you can't help but think how good he would have been had Kirk been able to stay healthy. I really think we would have been looking at a 1,000 yard, 10 touchdown player in his rookie year. For now, this is an A grade, and I am eager to see how JA does in year two. Zay Flowers from Boston College went to the Ravens at pick 22, and Zay had a pretty good overall rookie season. He finished the year with over 850 yards and five touchdowns, and had over 100 yards in the AFC Championship game against the Chiefs. Zay is a great route runner and has great hands, and with the Ravens having an MVP quarterback in Lamar Jackson, it's pretty easy to project a bright future for Flowers, especially with the rookie season he had. The Ravens do run the ball a lot, which will inevitably hurt Flowers' numbers in the long run, but I think Baltimore has their wide receiver one of the future, and that Zay will be a big problem for opposing secondaries moving forward. Having the offense be Lamar, Zay, and Mark Andrews is not fun for any defense to match up against against, and Zay would end up finishing 5th in the 2023 class in receiving yards. I thought it was a good rookie year by Zay, not a great rookie year, and we try to reserve the A plus grades for years like Jamar Chase had back in 2021, or Justin Jefferson in 2020, and I do think Zay will be a 1,000 yard player in 2024. For now, an A minus grade. Quinton Johnston was the second receiver taken in this class behind Seattle's Jackson Smith Jigba, and Quinton's rookie season was pretty forgettable. He finished the year with 431 yards and two touchdowns, which honestly doesn't seem that bad compared to the narrative surrounding Johnston, but it was a pretty poor rookie season, all things considered. He had just 64 receiving yards through the first six games on just 15 targets, and it's hard to get worse than that as a first round pick in today's era. Eventually, things did pick up for QJ as the season went on and he had three 50 plus yard games. He also had a career high 91 yards against the Broncos, but when Mike Williams went down with a torn ACL in week three, this was Johnston's time to step up and never give that job back. Justin Herbert played through the second week of December and Quinton never stepped up like the team expected him to and had two big drops during his rookie season, including one that could have been a game winner in Green Bay. That largely sums up his rookie season and a year later, this grade is a D. Jackson Smith Ajigba went to Seattle at pick 20, and the Seahawks left the first round with Devin Witherspoon and JSN. JSN's rookie season needs to have context rather than just looking at his 628 yards of production and assigning a letter grade. I know Seahawks fans love Tyler Lockett, as they should, as he's been a good player for them for several years, but him being on the team and him getting 122 targets in 2023 was naturally going to eat at JSN's production, which it did. Jackson also played this year at 21 years old, and this was a draft pick that was going to be used as a developmental player in year one, with the intention to fully unleash him in year two and beyond. Jackson didn't have any 100-yard games in his rookie season, but he had nine games with 40 or more yards, and was a pretty consistent player for the Seahawks, all things considered. He only had five games with seven or more targets, and had 60 or more yards in four of those games, which is not a coincidence. The only real knock on Jay JSN's rookie year was drops as he was credited with 8, and you will want to see that decline moving forward. I think it will, and I think he will be close to a 1,000 yard receiver if not go for 1,000 next year, and for now this is a C plus grade. Kalijah Kansi is up, and this is a difficult pick to grade one year later for a few reasons. Kansi re-aggravated a calf injury in week one against the Vikings after playing just 11 snaps, and his first full game came over a month later against the Lions. In that game, Kansi had six pressures in a sack and showed flashes of him being a great player, which was a common theme in 2023. He had 34 pressures on 381 pass rushing snaps in the regular season, which is actually pretty good for a rookie defensive tackle 
tackle. However, and this is why it's tough to grade, he had 11 pressures on just 62 pass rushing snaps in the postseason and more than doubled his win rate from 8.3% in the regular season to 17.5% in the postseason. In two playoff games, Kansi had six total tackles, two tackles for a loss and one and a half sacks, and I loved Kansi coming out of pit and thought he would be a good defensive tackle for a long time. He definitely showed flashes during his rookie season despite missing time, and he will be a big breakout candidate next year. I don't doubt him having a 9 or 10 sack season next year, and for now, this is a B. Jack Campbell finished his rookie year with 95 total tackles, including 5 TFLs and 2 sacks. I really like Jack Campbell coming out of Iowa and had no problem with Detroit taking him where they did despite being criticized for not just this pick, but the Gibbs selection too. The one negative from Campbell's rookie year that comes up is his lapses in coverage, which is to be expected from any rookie linebacker, not just Jack Campbell. What also needs to be factored in is the production Detroit received from him, despite playing just 50 59% of the defensive snaps in his rookie year. When this pick was made, I thought they were getting a player who would make over 100 tackles a year for the next 6 or 7 years, and he fell 5 short of that number in year 1, which was out of his control. I would also argue the coverage lapses from Campbell are a bit overblown, and I think this rookie year is a great stepping stone for him, and I think he can very easily be a pro bowler next year. And Lions fans, he might not even play in that game. A B plus grade. I thought the Patriots got an absolute steal when they drafted Christian Gonzalez at pick 17 thanks to Washington selecting Emmanuel Forbes at pick 16, and it looked that way through the first few games of Gonzalez's career. Through four games, or really three and a half, he had an opposing passer rating of 67.5 when targeted, and even had an interception in the Dolphins game. He missed just one tackle in three and a half games and had 17 tackles in that span, which is pretty good for, well, any corner, not just a rookie. Injuries were the name of the game for the Patriots on the defensive side of the ball in 2023, and Gonzalez was not an exception. His season would come to an end after tearing both his labrum and dislocating his shoulder. He showed a lot of flashes at just 21 years old, which is very good for a rookie corner, but as you can imagine with him playing as little as he did, this grade is incomplete. I would be shocked if he doesn't have a great 2024 season. That's all I have for today, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please like and subscribe, as only about 33% of people watching are subscribed, and it helps the channel tremendously. Until next time, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.